Quote, it's obvious prayers to your God don't work. They were shot in a church while worshiping their God, and he did nothing to protect them. End quote. Atheism versus Christianity. The great debate continues here today on Answering Atheism, episode 102. I'm your host, Christian Guy for you. I like atheists, but really love the militant atheists. Cue the intro. Oh, we don't have an intro. Well, it's very high budget around here. Very high budget. Um, well, let's discuss, let's discuss. God's higher on the totem pole than us. Um, if he didn't save him from the shooter, then that must have been his will for what to occur, allowing it to occur. Simple as that. He had already given them, he had already given them eternal life. The irony is people wanting God to step in and stop evil and yet at the same time, in the Old Testament, when that occurs, people spew every label in the book at God. And yet he's the standard of good. When he used Israel against other nations to judge them, to wipe them out, they're evil. And then that gets trash-talked, but when God doesn't step in, that gets trash-talked. But he had already given them, he had already given them eternal life. It's not God's fault that someone decided to do evil to do immoral acts. And by the way, it wasn't the weapon. It was the moral agent utilizing the prop, the weapon. So, I, I think I know which one this is referring to, but we don't even need to go into all the details of that. Um, Another aspect is whether or not this is allowed, this event with the route that was taken, with it being allowed, it can be used for good. It can be used for good in many different ways. Whatever may happen to you in life, if someone does you wrong, or if you have um, a weakness to any th different thing, use it for good. Use it for good. Use everything you can for good. Whatever may happen, use it for good. Use it for good. And this thing, this event that happened, probably months ago now, probably a few months probably three to five months or something like that. It can be used for good. It can be used for good. So. And another thing, interestingly, in terms of Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, what did this guy do? Kill, a.k.a. murder. He set out 
to be violent and murder, it would seem. He went against God, God's law, moral law, written on his heart, conscience. He went against that for whatever reason. I forget the specifics, but I, I think I know somewhat. And another thing is the blatant evil aspect. blatantly evil to take another one's life unjustly blatantly evil super evil that's a problem it's a problem on that set of fence your set of fence what is that which is evil how can there be objective evil without an objective good, objective standard of good. And is that standard yourself or outside of yourself? Outside of yourself, it's immaterial. Obviously, we're not the standard of good. I wouldn't want me to be the standard of good. I've messed up countless times in different things. And I still will mess up a ton of times in different things. There's an interesting tidbit I guess we can uh, dish out for this individual from Daniel 3. Okay. Daniel 3. So this guy says... It's obvious prayers to God didn't work. He don't know that. He's saying that, but he don't know that. He don't know that, that that's the case. Because he don't ultimately know if God does not exist. He affirms that. He thinks that, but he don't know that. He can't know an immaterial God does not exist. <clears throat> so he don't know that the prayers um, didn't work whatever they might have been praying for at the time or thereafter. You don't know the contents of the prayers, but it's, it's safe to assume, you know, they wanted protection. Safe to assume. God willed to allow it to occur. If you got a problem with that, take it up with him. He did nothing to protect him. Hmm. Well, as I said, he already gave him eternal life. Daniel 3. Interesting story in which these figures essentially said, either way, either way might occur. God might choose either route. And they, they prayed. Daniel 3.16 onwards, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, they refused to worship the golden image of himself because obviously, you know, they got God, so they're not going to worship an image. The God we serve is able to deliver us from it, is able and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. They made that a rule, a standard, obvious conflict. So they said, God is able, either way, either way. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and his attitudes Attitude towards them changed. Oh, I bet. He ordered the furnace heated seven times hotter than usual. 
and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, fabrics, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent and the furnace so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked his, asked his, his advisors, Weren't there three men that were tied up and thrown threw into the fire? They replied, Certainly, your majesty. He said, Look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like a son of the gods. That is... Uh, I, I think that's uh, supposedly pre-incarnate Jesus. I think that's the story there. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. And the satraps, perfects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was a hair of their heads singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there was no smell of fire on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I decree that the simple, or the, the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other God can save in this way. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So, um, it's pretty filtery to just only look at the cases which don't work and focus and emphasize them rather than give, you know, uh, other angles, other accounts where prayers do work, you know. And there's been interesting different things throughout history, um, different um, Christian statues or different things like that after certain events they're they're still left standing or unharmed that kind of stuff is somewhat interesting um one of the accounts of uh saint patrick in ireland or whatever um one of his stories is interesting where he went through um some sort of trial and he was unharmed but the uh, his enemies tried it and were harmed. So it's pretty fascinating stuff. Pretty fascinating stuff. Um, like I say, that's just one of the accounts, though. There were other alternate accounts for what may have occurred with St. Patrick. I, I don't know which one was the actual one. There's just different accounts. So anyhow... That's that. And uh, God offers eternal life. If you ask for forgiveness and uh, place your trust upon the Savior, ask him to save you, Jesus. So, anyhow, that's that. Um, and then we got a quote at the end here from John Adams. Always stand on principle even if you stand alone. All right. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you up ahead for episode 103. As always, take your fool.